Hey. And I'm Sweet. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Sugar, Sugar Shack. Shack. It is Labor Day weekend. Yes, yes, lots of fun, lots of family. Kind of weird. Is, but it is kind of weird because some <laughs> yes. of we're not doing our normal thing and, and, and working. But, but some of you are. Yes. And Those essential workers, thank you so much for being there in Thank you for, for caring for everyone and keeping everyone safe. And doing and, your job so that we can all continue. That's and we're going right. to get out of this together at some point. Hopefully Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Absolutely <laughs> soon. In the meantime, we have a great guest for you today. We're going to tell you about some things that Blues Against Hunger's got going on, and we got a great surprise for you. It made us very happy when we found out yesterday at a Ooh, board meeting today. Yes, yes, we yes. got a whole bunch of great new information <laughs> to give you and some wonderful updates as well as Bedlandia. That's right. We've got Bedlandia and a great interview with Robert Conley Farr. It's going to be so much fun. You guys are going to dig this guy. And it's straight out of Mississippi all the way up to Canada. And there's a connection with a Mississippi artist. And it's, it's, we're going to have a good time. Yeah, it's, it's a, a great, great interview. story. So you guys are going to have a great time. So, so stick around with us. Oh, and before you go, and oh, don't go course. anywhere, you make sure that you hit that bell. Ding, ding, ding. You don't, you don't want, want to miss, miss a single, single thing. thing. Subscribe. <laughs> and we will be right back with the Sugar Shack. Woohoo! <laughs> You're watching Blues Against Hunger, music and meals heal. Peace. Hey, sweet. What? What do you call it when all the cars in the world are lined up end to end? That's Labor Day. <laughs> or... We're back and it is Labor Day and we are glad to be here with you. Woohoo! That's right. It's Blues Party Day. But it's not only that. It's a celebration. It's a Blues Birthday Day that's for right. so many. It's my birthday in this month. Yes, right. And, and many, many other artists. But we're going to talk about them later because first we want to tell you about some great things and that is how much pounds we have raised. How much you helped us raise. Pounds All to of you. feed so and many people, hear this. so many families. We found out that last year we had one of those Facebook reminders, and it was a post from Blues Against Hunger. And on this same exact day, one year ago, it was just over 10,000 pounds that had been raised. We are over double that. And now we're on our way to even a greater number by the end of the year. And we haven't done it with Jamborees. We've done it with your support. So thank you so much. And you guys have helped us raise enough food to feed so many families. Since the beginning of the year, we're 22,000 435 pounds. That's over 10,000 kilos. We're twice as much as we were last year. Also, the new Blues Barrels are in San Felipe now and they're averaging about 50 pounds per month. This week they raised 19 pounds that went to the Men's Rehab Center. The San Felipe Boss Chapter also had an additional 485 pounds recently donated. Also, Blues Against Hunger donated 71 pounds to the La Mission Volunteers Firefighters. Great job, Bomberos. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you, everybody, because with your help, we were able to do that. And you, so are, you're keep making it, it possible for Blues Against Hunger to continue feeding these families and sharing our passion for the blues. It's super easy. All you need to do is check the links below and you can feed a family today. That's right. And if, if that ain't your gig, you know how you can participate also? You can participate in one of our raffles. We just gave away a Guns N' Roses guitar to Julian Robinson from Melbourne, Australia. And now we have coming in and we're going to start it real soon. This month, <laughs> as a matter of fact, a signed guitar from Joe Bonamassa. And for $5, just $5, that guitar could be yours. But we'll tell you more about that later. In the meantime, let's listen to some music. We're going to play a video from our upcoming guest. His name is Robert Connolly Farr. And Robert Connolly is my kind of blues. That guy, it's dirty, it's gritty. And this next song oh, is Oh, super all great that. song. The song is called Train Train. Check You're going to like this. You want to listen? Let's keep this one really inside. Yeah, okay? yeah. Yeah, like really simmering. Trying, 
train Going down the railroad train Train, train Going down the railroad train I said, and can you believe this guitar and drums? I love it. I know, love so it, love simple, it. but just so good. Anyways, that's Train Train, Robert Connolly Farr. We're going to be talking with him a little bit more in a moment. But before we do that... It's September, if you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, because it's my birthday. She doesn't get a birthday month. day. She gets a birthday yeah, month. Yeah, and check the link below because I have a fundraiser going. So I want you to help me feed people for my birthday. So. Yeah, there's a really great program. We've got a lot of people this, this year. This Actually, this last month. We had uh, Teresa Mala, That's right. Suzette Woodarczyk, Your sister. Uh, myself, Craig Klein. We had several people do these, and it's really making a difference. So if you have a birthday and you don't know what to do specifically and you want to help somebody, help, have help. a Facebook fundraiser, and you can select us as one of the nonprofits because we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and those donations will go feed the hungry. That's right. Super easy. Why don't you tell them uh, yeah, some so of these birthdays. Birthdays. So you know what? I share this fabulous birthday month with some great blues artists. In 1934, Freddie King. 1925, Jimmy Reed. Born in 1939, we have Mr. Guitar Shorty. And in 1941, Otis Redding. And my big favorite in 1925, B.B. King. Born in 1926, John Coltrane. Ray Charles, 
Mr. Soul Man 1930, and ZZ Hill, where ZZ Top gets the name, is 1935. And in 1935, Coco Taylor, queen, queen, queen of September. This is an impressive list of blues artists, yes, wouldn't you say? Yes, yes. Oh, and I'm honored to be part of that list. That's right. And if you're on that list, remember what we said. You can participate in Blues Against Hunger, and you can use it and be part of this list yourself. That's right. Because we'll start telling people about your donations to this organization on your birthday. Yep, yep, yep. And September makes some good babies. <laughs> I got one of my own. I'm a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this next song is also from Robert Connolly Farr. We really dig this guy. And this song is I Like So Well. We actually play, we play this song. We play this song. It's one of my favorite songs. And many people like it because it also has this kind of groove to it you get hooked on. And the name of the song the is... The name is it's Hard Time Killing Floor Blues, so check it out. Originally by Skip James, and here is Robert Connolly Farr. Told you to dig it, huh? Ooh, Pretty cool song. I yeah, love that song. It's kind of laid back, and he's on the porch, and he's got a little groove on. Uh, we do it an electrified version of it, and Skip James did his, his acoustic guitar version of it, and uh, it is just a great song. And the song is written during depression, so you kind of you can get the feel and weird and why it's that way. So we hope you really like it. Um, and we got more for you because Robert's on the show today. Yes, actually. we interview him today, so you'll learn a lot about that guy. But before we go on to that, we want to tell you how you can participate and what we're doing right now. As you know, or may not know, we just gave away a guitar, Guns N' Roses signed Guns N' Roses guitar. And the guitar could not have gone to a better winner, Julian Robinson from Melbourne, Australia. That's right. He told us it's been his life dream to own a signed Guns N' Roses guitar. So it was meant to be. So thank you very much for yes. supporting and helping us, Julian. And I'm so glad that you just got that guitar. Just got it in the mail yesterday. And if you want to add to your collection, Julian, the tickets are five bucks and you can get this next guitar. The new guitar. Which is Joe Bonamassa's guitar. I screamed for like three hours when I found out. <laughs> 
Joe Bonamassa has donated a signed guitar that we're going to tell you all about here very soon. It'll be in the next Sugar Shack. We're pushing it real hard, and you're going to see it on our website with the links in the description below. below. But before we go any further with that, we want to tell you a little bit about what our goal is this year. We want to get to 50000 and we're not quite there. We're about halfway with the donations that came in from the, the Guns N' Roses guitar. We're super close to being halfway. So we want, we need your help to get to 50,000. And we can do pounds. it. Pounds. It's amazing. <laughs> like we told you, 10 last time, 22 now, we're gonna hit 50. That's so right. So let's, uh, let's go, you know, speaking of history and what we did in the past and what we're gonna do, we got a new artist for you. His name is Jimmy Duck Holmes. And the thing is so cool about this next song and Very this next cool artist story. is that he's gonna be playing an Epiphone guitar, which we're gonna be giving away, and he is playing it at the Epiphone headquarters. So Woo! a similar guitar that signed, Guns N' Roses signed, Epiphone, by the way, which was a special to Les Paul. And now we have a Les Paul coming from Bonamassa, also Epiphone. And you know what else is so great about it? Is that the song that we're going to close out this show with is sung by Robert Connolly Farr, but it was written by Jimmy Duck Holmes. And he is this next artist. You're going to like this song. Check it out. Some old blues for you right here. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave in the morning. I might not come back this time. I'm gonna leave in the morning. I might not come back this time. I can't win for losing. I done got tired of trying. I've got my suitcase packed Got my ticket in my hand Yes, I've got my suitcase packed Got my ticket in my hand If I Keep on standing, things have got to change. If I don't leave tomorrow, I'm gonna leave sometime Sunday for sure. If I don't leave tomorrow, I'm gonna leave sometime Sunday for sure. You know, sometime Monday. I'll be way up the road. I think I'll get up tomorrow. Do like old man Henry Ford. I think I might get up tomorrow. Do like old man Henry Ford. Eat my breakfast in Nashville. Eat my supper on Hooker Road.
joke for me? I do. Oh, joke. Oh, I got one. You know what the blues guitar said to the banjo? What? <laughs> well, the, the blues guitar is sad, of course. He says, I'm so sick and tired of playing my blues guitar. Oh, it's so sad for him. I know, and you know what the banjo said? What? He said, he thought the blues guitar player was whining. He said, I'm so dang tired of playing all this happy music. Is that not the stupidest joke ever? Uh, it, was, <laughs> that was so much funnier when I just read it to myself. Welcome back, everybody, to the Sugar Shack! Woohoo! We've got a great guest for you today, Robert Conley Farr. We it, met Robert back in April, right? after the beginning of this whole COVID thing. And what happened was we did an eight hour blues-a-thon. Some of you watched, I know for sure. To race, and we did, we did. We raised a lot of good food for that and, and it was worthwhile in a very big way. And we met Robert on that day. Yeah, and we had, he was so much fun that we said, you know what, we're gonna bring him back. So he's here today with us. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Robert. Right on, right on. What's up y'all coming at you from Vancouver, British Columbia today and excited to be here with you hi robert so tell us a little bit about yourself well i was i was actually born in auburn alabama and uh, i lived there for like a year and i was in illinois for a year and then we moved to bolton mississippi and i was there since 80 i think yeah so you grew up in mississippi we love that area had such a great time there that's it man I, the town i grew up in is the same town charlie Patton was born in sam chapman was from there they wrote uh when the levee breaks was written by a guy that was from Raymond, Mississippi, about seven miles down the road. It's a ton of history there, a ton of, ton of great history. What inspired you to play the blues? Oh, um, I was Jimmy Duck Holmes, man. That was Jimmy Duck. He, um, I went home uh, a couple of years ago. I got a phone call from my brother and he said you know, they found a tumor behind my dad's heart and it was inoperable. And it was like, you got to get home and, and, um, and, and be here with us right now. And so I went home and, Spent a couple of weeks with my dad. He's doing good, by the way. Uh, but uh, I spent a couple of weeks with him. And one of those days, we drove up into the Delta and around. And we came back down 49 through Bentonia, Mississippi. And, man, I wanted to show him this old building that I've been taking pictures of since I was a teenager. And um, I just always thought it was beautiful, this blue little cinder block building with a Coca-Cola sign on the front right beside this old cotton gin. And, so we stopped there and we took a picture and the front door was open and we went in and struck up a conversation with Jimmy and um, he played us a song and man, I honest to God, like that was it. It was, it totally changed. What it did was it brought music right back home for me because I grew up about 15 miles from where Jimmy's from. And so I basically gone all the way up to Canada and had a band and, you know, trying my, trying to do my thing. And then I meet Jimmy and this thing happens where he just starts to teach me and he starts to show me what he learned from, from Henry Stuckey and, and all of those guys that came before him. And it's been phenomenal. It's, it's totally changed the trajectory of my musical career, just meeting Jimmy Duck Holmes, you know, and if you get a chance, you got to go by and see him. You know, he's, he's at his blue front every after this whole pandemic thing's over, of course. You know, you've got to keep him safe. But, you know, he's at his juke joint every single day. He's he's there to welcome tourists to come in or play him a song, sell him a drink. You know, it's a beautiful scene out there. It's really cool. Full of history. A lot of good musical history. So, Robert, tell me about the video Just Jive. I love that oh, video. Oh, I shake my booty every time. I love it. Yeah, that's uh, Just Jive. Yeah. And that was filmed at the uh, the Bentonia Blues Festival last year. And you know that what you see is what you get. I mean, that's that's the that's that that place on a Friday, Saturday night. You know, it's just full of people, and everybody's grooving, and anybody can have an instrument, come up, play. It doesn't matter. You know, like it's it's about the good times. It's about the music. Tell us about how you found this song. So, um, like I said, I met Jimmy about three years ago, and. Um, I got to know a fella that was working closely with him um, at the time as well. And that fellow was uh, trying to manage some shows and some uh, recording opportunities from Jimmy. And throughout that process, he had met this fella who had been to Mississippi in the late 70s to record some, uh, some obscure blues musicians. And he had a series of recordings that he had done of Jimmy. 
And one of those songs. So anyway, the, uh, 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 this guy that was working with Jimmy sent me those recordings and that one song, Just Job, really stuck at, stuck out to me. The tempo, the energy, um, but I couldn't make out all the words, right? And and Jimmy, uh, you know, honestly didn't remember writing the song. And so he said, well, you know, just write some more words. And so that's what I did. <laughs> he said, and, you know, he's like, that's how music is anyway. You know, you know just write some more words, you know, and um, <clears throat> So I did, and and it just, you know, and then we recorded it out at Leroy's, and it's just turned into something that's so fun. And then to play it there for him at his juke joint and and just to see the energy with everybody, you know, I mean, there's something special, and and, and I, I love that it speaks to the living blues. Like, the blues is still alive and well in Mississippi, you know. I mean, you got these old guys teaching these new guys, and then these new guys are going out and doing – kind of different things with the music and coming back and doing it with those old guys and man it's it's special you know there's something to be said about that so mississippi to canada i mean uh, that's a big move so uh, how did that uh, how did that affect your music how did that change your music in any way going from mississippi to canada <laughs> i moved up to vancouver i think it was 12 years ago and I finished, I finished school. I was in, uh, I went to Auburn in Alabama and then I did uh, a couple of years for a nonprofit with them out in Greensboro, South of Tuscaloosa. And I just, uh, I came to see a friend in Seattle and took a weekend road trip up to Vancouver and fell in love with it. And, you know, I've been here ever since. How did Mississippi and the Canadian musicians help shape your sound now yeah <laughs> yeah no you know always always you know say that i'm from bolton mississippi and vancouver miss uh, vancouver bc you know it's uh i think it's important you know all the music that i've written and the guys that have you know worked these songs with me are canadians you know all the recording studios i've been in are canadian studios you know there's just you know i think that there is something really magical about the the quality of musicians up here and especially in the blues scene and and uh you know, so I always want to, you know, talk about that, but I also, also want to honor my home and where I'm from in Mississippi and those elder blues musicians who are still to this day, they ain't making much money, but they'll teach you. They'll take a minute and teach you, you know, and that's uh, that's something special. The blues in general. Can you tell us how the blues has affected your life? Well, I mean, I, I think kind of blues is a feeling, you know, I mean, you get people that tell you every everybody's got their own take on what the blues is, but you know, um, there's, uh, there's, there's definitely, it, it, well, what I love about my friends up here, you know, they go home, they go home and see Jimmy, they go and, and, and they tour down through the States, you know, they play these old juke joints, you know, Harp Dog Brown, and, you know, it's, it's cool to see, to see that, 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 that people that are honoring, um, you know, the elders from up here, even, you know, that's, it's, it's a, cra it's a great thing to see. So Robert, I got to know, uh, cause I, I really love your music. What would you say are your top three artists right now? Oh, geez. Okay. Well, it's kind of albums. Cause I, I like, I'm into, al like I'm into albums, right? So yeah, I've been in the RL Boyce's Rattlesnake Boogie album, man, that thing is so good so good um he was up for a grammy and he's man he's just doing his thing he's out of como mississippi um i saw the zz top documentary and i gotta be honest say I, I never really listened to zz top before then and i can't stop right now so i've been into that album uh, i think it's diguello but it's so good um and uh, uh jimmy duck home's new album cypress grove dan Auerbach did that one man that thing is sick if you if you hadn't heard it you gotta go hear it it's i mean it's it's quintessential jimmy it's like you're hearing him at the blue front but dan pulled in with all his you know black keys goodness and did his album like you should check it out it's cool cypress grove by jimmy duck holmes robert and how about the new artists in the blues that you like right now there is a guy um He's out of L.A. Lasers, Lasers, Birmingham. Amazing, really amazing uh, songwriter. Um, let's see. Oh, this these are good ones, man. I feel like I should like I should have had this question. <laughs> um, the other one, uh, the Dexatines. They're a band out of Alabama that's been around for a while now, and they're in the vein of kind of drive-by truckers. Um, but man, they got some killer albums and they're all that kind of underground Southern rock. So, uh, check them out. The Dexatines. 
And, uh, and then I got to say RL Boyce again, because man, he's so groovy, you know, and he's still alive. He's still running around doing shows. You know, if you can check him out, check out some RL Boyce. So Robert, tell me how uh, COVID and the pandemic has affected you, your family and your community. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's so, I mean, man, so many people depend on live music, on the venues, the restaurants, the clubs, you know, my wife, she's got a hair salon, she's had to shut down. And, you know, it's so many people depend on these type of venues. And, um, you know, so my heart goes out to, to people that's had to shut down on the, the, on the flip side of that coin, I've been incredibly um, uh, blown away by the resiliency in people and how they've come together. And, you know, like there's this one place in town, the Heatley that I love to play at and, um, you know, he had to shut down. And so then he started uh, filming uh, uh, one-off music videos, you know, with like one or two people in there with the stage and this beautiful backdrop. And so just to see how, these places are starting to kind of open up to still support the music venue or the musical community and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think as a, as a songwriter or a emerging professional musician, you know, um, get your stuff together with regards to websites and sync placements and all that information that can go into grant writing and things like that, you know, using this time wisely and then just trying not to be an asshole you know what i mean trying to just when i walk out my door just be a good guy you know like not cause any more pain there's enough pain in the world right now you know <laughs> robert are there any other videos that you would like to share or tell us about appreciate it man yeah no it just job is uh i got just job and i got a couple of other videos on my youtube so you know feel free to use what you want um you know and if you want to uh jimmy duck holmes actually just released a video um and it's kind of funky and cool and you know, so yeah, you know, like anything, anything to help out, you know, him, like he's, you know, he's helped me out so much. So if you, you know, if you want to plug one of his videos, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, Robert, thank you so much. We, we had so such a glad. great time. It was nice to have you again. Uh, appreciate it, man. You take care of yourself. And uh, as we did it back in Easter and, and like we did today, uh, we're going to continue to promote you and tell our friends about you. And thank you very much for sharing your blues with us and, uh, and helping us raise more so that we can feed more and share the blues and in hunger with the blues. Music and meals heal. Yeah, take care of yourself. Bye. Yeah, you too, man. Well, that was great. Uh, Robert, I really dig Robert. He's I did too. I dig, and I I dig music him. too. We hope you guys enjoyed Super it. Super fun. And we are not done yet. So no, stick no, around. no. We're Hang gonna... out. We got more videos for you. And then we're going to come back with a song that not only covers some of the Jimmy Duck Holmes, but it's also Robert Connolly Farr, and it's one of Jimmy's songs, and you are going to love, love it. it. I don't care about what color y'all. Blue don't care about color. You know? Play it, man. If you don't want me, why don't you tell me so? If you don't want me, why don't you tell me so? Big up telephone, I'ma call my baby 
BB King, does anybody out there know what the BB stands for? It's not his name. It actually stands for Blues Boy. His real name is Riley. Now you know. Hey, what? Isn't our cousin Karen having a baby today? What? She's wearing her bustle backwards, no way. What would give you the impression she's having a baby? She told me it was Labor Day. <laughs> and we are back. Robert Conley Farr. Told you he was a great guy. I love oh, that I love it. <laughs> he says, he makes you, I mean, he's just, he's just such a good guy. You just want to, you almost want to just go give him a big hug. I he's do. Just, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that, Robert? Uh, anyways, love the music, man. Keep it up doing a great job. Yeah, you too, man. I think that I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you that were out there today and um, spending your time with us and helping us. Please take the time, if you have not already, make a donation, buy a t-shirt, get a box of food, a box of chicken, you can buy rice, beans, all of that cool stuff is down in the links below. That's it for us. I'm Six. And I'm Sweet. This has been The Sugar Shack. That's right, and we've had such a great time. I want to say thank you so much. We both want you to be safe and be kind to others. We love you. Very much we do. And, and we, we will, will see, see you next time. time. Do you know what the blues guitar said to the banjo? No, what did he say? The blues guitar said, I am sick and tired of playing blues guitar. What? What? That's sad. I know. You know what the banjo said? What? Well, I'm sick and tired of playing all this darn happy banjo music. No, that didn't go over very well. <laughs> no. <laughs> this joke sucks.